Hello everybody, Parallel here, and welcome back to Star Trek Online. The Phoenix Prize Pack has returned, and it's a tech upgrade weekend. That's right, that is the perfect synergy of events. Those two events go together perfectly. So what I thought I'd do is take a look at the Phoenix Prize Pack this time around, see if there's anything new, anything worth checking out. I heard there are a few duty officers this time around that are new, so we will definitely be checking those out. I thought I'd also do a little bit of a buyer's guide uh, for anyone new to the Phoenix Prize Pack event. Uh, I can give a few tips about some items you might want to get your hands on because there are some pretty great items in this pack. And what I thought I'd also do is just talk a little bit about the Tech Upgrade Weekend and why everyone loves to have uh, this Phoenix Prize Pack during a Tech Upgrade Weekend because there are some fantastic tech upgrades you can get from the Phoenix prize pack. So we'll go into those as well and do a little bit of a comparison between those and the regular, uh, you know, the regular tech upgrades. So let's jump in here. Now, first, uh, before I get too far in, you're probably wondering, how do I get this Phoenix prize pack and how does this event work? Well, while the Phoenix prize pack event is running, you can come in here to your, uh, quest log and you can see here's the Phoenix prize pack event. You can click on it. And you will see this particular event is running from August 3rd to August 10th. This is 2017. This is, in fact, the third Phoenix Prize Pack we've had on uh, PC. I believe consoles have had a couple of these events as well. So these events come around, you know, a couple times a year. The schedule is not very regular. This one we had uh, about a six-month time period since the last one. But then previously it was only about three months in between events. So... I don't think they've uh, really settled on a fixed schedule, but you can expect them, you know, every three to six months or so, probably a couple times a year, they will come around. And when they do, you can buy Phoenix prize packs. Basically, it's a form of a loot box, um, but it's a little bit different than like your standard, uh, you know, loot boxes that you have, um, you know, the very, from the various, uh, you know, loot, loot box events that go on. Um, because these ones you actually just buy it with dilithium. So what you can do is actually go into your dilithium store, go to special items and boxes, and you will see it is right here, the Phoenix prize pack. Um, well, the other lock boxes you can also buy with dilithium, but you have to use uh, master keys to open them. And these ones, you don't have to use any keys to open them. You just spend the dilithium for them and you can open them and start collecting the tokens you need to spend to buy the items. So you see here, for an individual one, it is 4,500 dilithium, and for a 10-pack, it is 40,000, so 4,000 per 10% discount there. Um, a little bit more than 10% discount. So pretty pretty nice. Uh, yeah, pretty nice. I would definitely recommend to get it in the 10-pack if you're going to be buying them in bulk. Um, you can see I've stocked up quite a bit of dilithium, so I've got a few of them to open here. Um, so that's how you get them. Now, in fact, there's actually one other way to get them, and that is uh, if you go here to where the event is and uh, hail, you can actually go to Grim on uh, Drozana Station. He'll actually, I've already accepted the quest here. But uh, you talk to him and you can do this Phoenix Prize Pack quest. It's already in progress. You can do it once per day uh, for the, your entire account. So you can get kind of one, he'll give you one free Phoenix Prize Pack. So you just run over here, talk to him. That's not him. Where is he? This one. Aha. Yep. So you go receive your Phoenix Prize Pack. Boom. And there you go. So you get one extra Phoenix prize pack per day, but that's like 4,500 dilithium. So, hey, you know, it's a free uh, free dilithium. You know, nothing nothing wrong with that. It's certainly worth taking advantage of. You can do that once per day per account. So let's go ahead and open it up here. So when you open a pack, you get uh, one of these Phoenix prize uh, tokens, basically. All right, and these tokens come in various rarities. you got your common or your uncommon, your rare, your very rare. There is also ultra rare and epic. Now be warned, the ultra rare and epics are extremely rare. They have a very low drop chance, well under 1%, um, probably 0.5% or even less. Oh, there's some uh, Davidians showing up. 
So we've got, uh, uh, but I will say that for the uh, the very rare and lower, these are actually quite common. You can get quite a few of these um, from oh, just by opening packs. And there's a lot of good items you can get just with these three, uh, you know, these three rarity tokens. So it's well worth doing this event while it's running. Um, so kind of the, I guess kind of the purpose of these Phoenix Prize Packs is to give the player access to previous items, sort of exclusive items from old events. Um, you know, for a long time, Cryptic was very strict about not bringing back uh, event items. Like, they were very exclusive, and if you missed that event, then you were pretty much screwed forever. But the Phoenix Prize Pack has kind of changed that. Um, and I think it kind of has to do with also with the console release, because they wanted a way to give console players a way to get some of those... Uh, you know, some of those exclusive items from old events without actually having to bring all of those, you know, years and years of events over to the console side. So I think it kind of solves several problems. And one other problem it solves is that it's also a very good dilithium sink. Um, you can, the dilithium market goes way down as soon as, um, uh, you know, as soon as this prize pack comes around because it really removes a lot of dilithium from the economy, which is good, which is also needed. So all around, this event has been quite successful, um, I think, for Cryptic. I think it's helped the game a lot. I think the only downside is just how exceedingly rare the Ultra Rare and Epic tokens are. So once you get your hand on these tokens, um, all you have to do is double-click on them, and it will open up the store. So this is where you go to you know, your Phoenix Prize Redemption store. Now, the funny thing is, is that... Um, you can hang on to these tokens forever, even once the Phoenix Prize Pack event ends. That's no problem. You can hang on to these, and uh, you can still spend them anytime you want, even if the event is not running. The event running just means you can actually, you know, obtain the Phoenix Prize Packs. Once you have them in your inventory, and once you have these tokens, you can hang on to them and open them whenever you want. And the store will always be here. In fact, these ones I have here already opened. Uh, those are from the last Phoenix Prize Pack event. Uh, I never spent them. And they actually will be updated to show anything new in the store as well this time around. So, you, you know, there's no problem hanging on to these. You just have to make sure that you buy the packs, the, you know, the prize packs during the event. So once you bring this up, you can see it has the what you can buy at all the different rarities. So you've got your Epic, your Ultra Rare, Very Rare, Rare, and Uncommons. Um, and like I said, I wanted to check out if there's anything new. So you can see the Epics. This is where you get your Tier 6 reward packs uh, from previous events. I can already see one new thing. The Xyphius is here. Aha, uh -huh, that's new. Um, so the Xyphius was from a previous summer event. So if you miss that event, you can get this from the Phoenix Prize Pack if you get an Epic token. And like I said, the Epic ones and the Ultra runs are exceedingly rare, well under 1%. So you're going to have to buy you know, hundreds of these packs if you want to get your hands on these, unless you get absurdly lucky. But uh, So this has all the Tier 6 rewards from previous events, so all the free ships. Um, anything else new in here? Rangi Warship. I'm assuming that's the Nandi, although it doesn't say it. Was the Nandi in there before? I'm not sure. But if you've got your Krenim Science Vessel, you've got your Kobali Samsar, Breen Sarthalon, and Breen Resreth. Uh, the Chell Bulg is not in here, but that one was pretty recent, I think, so probably not time for it to be in here yet. Um, usually, they, uh, you know, thing items aren't added to the you know Phoenix Prize Pack until you know well over a year, probably a couple years since they've been out. Um, so that's what you can get for Epic Ultra Rare are sort of the tier five uh, ships from very old events. Like you can even get the Gemitar Attack ship, which is fantastic. That's the tier five bug ship. Um, you can get uh, the Chell Grat. That's an older one. The Plesh Breck, Rising Corvette. Rising Luxury Cruisers. I don't have those two. Those are actually ones that I missed. I didn't start playing until around Delta Rising when they added the Tier 6 ships. So, um, yeah, missed those. Uh, it'd be nice to get an Ultra Rare. I did get one Ultra Rare previously, and I did use that to get an attack ship on one of my other characters. Um, and you can also get the Voth Bulwark, which is a pretty rare ship until this Phoenix Prize Pack came out. Um, 
I don't see anything new there though. So it looks like they did add the Xyphius here. Um, on the very rare side, am I seeing anything new here? The Mary Eunice Agony, the Agony Rifle, was that there before? I don't recall. Chris on Spike was there, the Energy Torpedo was there, the Zephyr Cochrane, and the Red Matter Capacitor. All right, so uh, very good things you can get at the very rare level. Um, now let's see, anything new here at the rare? Um, Crystal Absorption Matrix, the Tanius is still here, that was there before. Hakiv, uh, Killer Mar, and the Emergency Con Hologram were there before. But ha, here are the new ones. We've got Ang the Vicious. He's a Breen. All right, I'm actually not familiar with this guy. Let's see what he does. Um, plus five damage versus Tholians. Oh, okay, pretty cool. So I'm definitely going to pick him up. Who else we got here? Automated Personnel Unit. It's an alien male. Hmm. Another duty officer. Doubles the chance to expose targets during ground combat. Mm, kind of nifty. And we've got a tactical exocomp, huh? Okay, so I've never seen this guy either. Um, yeah, these must be from all from really old events. Uh, what have we got here? His ability, 33% chance to reduce the recharge time of grenades by 5 seconds whenever a grenade is thrown. Okay, I'm not too big on grenades, but I'm going to pick them up anyway. Um, See, the, the, rare, uh, the rare tokens are really pretty common. You're going to get lots of these. So, you know, picking up these duty officers, you know, very rare duty officers, no, no reason not to pick these up. Um, I'll take a look at those in my duty officer roster in just a moment. I just want to see if there's anything new here. The Phoenix. That was there before, I believe. The moats were there. Fighter squadron. I don't know if that was there before. That might be new. Everything else looks like it's pretty much standard. So the yeah, the main thing I see here is in the they added the Xyphius, maybe the Nandi. I'm not sure if that was there before. And then they also added the uh, duty officers here at the rare level. All right, so let's take a look at these duty officers. Uh, so we've got, yeah, let's just look at my roster. Um, let's just do very rare, because they're all very rare. Now that emergency con hologram, he is really awesome. Um, he has the uh, nice ability where if you ever hit emergency power to engines, it will refresh your evasive maneuvers, very nice. Um, okay, so here we go. Here's Aang the Vicious. Okay, so he's a ground warfare specialist. Um, plus five all damage um, versus Tholians in both space and ground combat. So that's kind of cool. You can slot him on the ground, and he will actually affect your space damage. So that actually is really, really nice. Plus he's a Breen. That's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. So we also got here the APU. So we got the Automated Personnel Unit. Um, doubles chance to expose target. Okay. Armory Officer. So he's an Armory Officer. And we've got the Tactical Exocomp. Now this would be really cool if this is a Bridge Officer. I've always wanted to have an Exocomp Bridge Officer who would like float around and stuff. That'd be really cool. But uh, no, he's just a Duty Officer. Um, he comes with um, chance to reduce time for most grenades. Okay, 33% chance to reduce the recharge time by five seconds. But it's still kind of cool to have an exocomp on your team, even if you don't slot these on your active roster. You know, they're still great for doing just duty officer missions. You know, they always help uh, in that regard. So, very cool. So three new duty officers to pick up, and then also you know those epic ships if if you need them. Fortunately, I've gotten all of the tier six ships from events, so we don't really need them. Now, one thing you can see on every rarity, you can actually downgrade your token and get two of the next lower grade, which is actually kind of important. Um, when we start talking about the tech upgrades, it's actually quite important there because those are actually at the lowest level. And if you want to get your hands on those, it's actually worth down converting. So you can down convert and get two 
take an ultra rare and get two very rares and so on and so forth all the way down to uncommon so as far as buyer's advice here um, I mean if you are lucky enough to get your hands on an epic one of course pick up these ships if you missed the event um, this is actually really nice for people who did miss previous events. At least this is a way to get it to get these ships, even if it is really hard to get them, um, just by how rare it is. But at least it is possible. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, all of these are pretty decent. The Frankie Nandy is an amazing ship. The Credum Science Vessel is still good. Has a good, um, uh, excellent console and uh, a good uh, trait as well. Um, so those will be worth picking up. Now, ultra rare, I mean, you can always pick up, you know, the Gemitar attack ship is still a great tier five ship. You could also pick up the Bulwark if you wanted to, good ship. Um, those are more for collector's items though. I believe that the Gemitar attack ship also will unlock the hangar pets, which is kind of nice if you want to get, you know, if you're planning to get like a uh, Gemitar dreadnought carrier um, and want the uh, frigate hangar pets, you could pick that up. Um, now, here's what I would say you know, now that we're down to the very rare level, these are the ones that you're actually very likely to be able to obtain, even with just buying just a few of the uh, prize packs. I would highly recommend getting a red commander capacitor. Uh, it is a, a non-consumable device that you can throw onto any ship, um, and it will increase all of your power levels by 25 for 20 seconds, which is absolutely fantastic, especially with the recent nerf to consoles like the plasmonic leech uh, the red matter capacitor is great very good so that would be one of my top recommendations that is actually very realistic for almost anyone to get their hands on with a gel you need is just a very rare token which are quite easy to get crystalline spike eh, it's okay um, it's a decent ground uh, uh, ground mod you know, kit module for getting aggro off yourself is decent um, Severin, Sochran, uh, Severin Cochran Shotgun. Um, this used to be amazing, but it's gone through a few nerfs and it's not affected you know, by physical damage buffs anymore. So it's still decent, but not as uber as it used to be. Crystalline Energy Torpedo is also a fantastic item. If you, have, if you haven't picked this up and you want to go with an anti-proton build, I highly recommend this torpedo. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. It's very similar to the Nausicaan Torpedo. Uh, that's an energy-based disruptor torpedo, whereas this one is an energy-based uh, anti-proton torpedo. So definitely worth picking up if you have an anti-proton build. Uh, Mirror Universe Agony Rifle is kind of meh. Um, on the rare side, I'd highly recommend uh, the VSS Tanius Admiralty card. Uh, this is a fantastic Admiralty ship. I use it all the time. Uh, here it is right here. It is a uh, Admiralty card that gets plus 50 to all stats when alone, which is amazing. It basically gives you like almost 90, or not quite 90, but almost 90, 80 to 90 in like every stat um, when you make uh, slot the ship by itself into an Admiralty mission, so it's fantastic. Definitely pick that up. Um, pick up the duty officers. Like I said, they're all very good. That emergency con hologram with the ability to reset your evasive maneuvers is fantastic. Um, that's probably my top one I would see. Ang the Vicious seems decent too, though, because he's a ground officer that you can slot and get a bonus to your space damage on Tholians. So pretty good there. There are plenty of, you know, Tholian red alert. There's lots of Tholian missions out there, so that'd be a big help there. Um, that's what I'd recommend at that level. For uncommon, these things are just like tribbles and whatnot. Actually, some of these tribbles do look new as well in this pack. But, um, you know, if you want any of these tribbles for collector's items, you know, go ahead and pick them up. If you want any of these non combat pets, emotes, of course, you know, you can pick these up. Uncommon, uh, uh, Uncommon tokens are just super easy to get. You'll get lots of them, so you know, pick up whatever you want. Um, I believe these fighter squadrons are, in fact, consumables, so you might want to be a little bit careful with that. Um, these uh, bonuses are pretty decent. If you want to pick up like a fleet mark bonus, might be worth it. But you know, it's up to you. But this brings us to the last thing here, and why why everyone wants this Phoenix Prize Pack for the Tech Upgrade Weekends is this item right here. 
And so yeah, let's go ahead and move then into sort of the tech upgrades here. So this is the Phoenix Universal Tech Upgrade. You can get this from the Phoenix Prize Pack just from the Uncommon Tokens. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, one of them up here. And before this tech upgrade weekend is out, I'm going to be picking up very many of these. These are absolutely amazing tech upgrades. I'm going to go ahead and throw this over here. Um, I think these are probably the best tech upgrade in the game outside of like the, uni the Omega Particle upgrades. Um, and of course, also outside of the uh, Ultimate Tech upgrade, which is... Um, you know, the immediate Mark 14 gold upgrade that you can only get from those uh, key lockbox events. But um, outside of those two, this is pretty much the best tech upgrade in the game. You can see it gives 51,000 tech points, which is awesome. That is really, really high. It gives you just your standard quality improvement chance, which is, you know, not the best, but since it has so many tech uh, technology points it saves you a ton of the regular tech upgrades and spending dilithium on those and it can be used on any item as well so you don't you know have to craft particular uh you know engineering or ground or beam weapons or whatever you can use this on any item in the game that is why this is so amazing because if you have items to upgrade, the amount of dilithium you save with these Phoenix Universal Tech upgrades actually almost completely, you know, uh, accounts for the cost of the Phoenix Prize Packs themselves, particularly if you buy them in the 10 packs. So if you buy them in the 10 packs and you convert them all to, you know, Phoenix Tech upgrades, the amount of dilithium you save from you know by not having to use the normal upgrades will actually pay for itself it's almost as if that you know these phoenix prize packs it's almost as if they were free because of the dilithium you save because of how awesome these uh, universal uh or these phoenix universal tech upgrades are so let's take a look at it here so let's say i wanted to upgrade something um i actually do want to work on a polaron set so i bought a omnidirectional polaron beam here and say i want to upgrade this So let's do a little comparison so you can see if I do an Omega. Omega, t part, Omega uh, tech upgrades give you the same amount. They give you the 51,200 technology points. and But I th believe they give a much higher chance of... Yeah, they give you the 4x quality improvement. So that's why these are better. Because um, this is going to give you... Yeah, this is already see you taking it to 7%. So let's compare it to the Phoenix prize pack. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't realize that it gave more. Wait a minute. Let me just double check here. This only gives 25,000. Wow, I didn't realize that. So it is actually... It gives more technology points than the Omega Particle upgrade, but it does have the lower quality improvement chance. So, or just it's just a standard quality improvement chance. So, um, but you can see here, one... Universal uh, Phoenix upgrade is enough to take this uh, all the way from Mark 12 to Mark 13 ultra rare. That's pretty awesome. That's why these are so good. Omega Particle Tech uh, up upgrades are still better because of that crit chance, which is what you want to get you know the next quality improvement. But um, still, these Phoenix prize packs are amazing. You just compare it here to like a normal Superior Beam upgrade that's only going to give you remember we're an upgrade weekend here so these values are doubled but um that's only going to give you twenty five thousand, normally like twelve thousand five hundred. so yeah or twelve thousand eight hundred. sorry um so that's what those give and not very much uh <laughs> yeah not very much uh quality improvement chance even the let's look at an experimental experimental do hey give more quality improvement chance they have the 2x so you plug that in there yeah it does give you a little bit more um, but it still only gives you the same amount of technology points and of course yeah that's not fair to compare it to the ultimate because that's kind of uh, cheating so but there you go guys that's why everyone loves this phoenix universal tech upgrade for these tech upgrade weekends you can just 
you can upgrade things to Mark 14 so fast, and even though it's only standard crit chance improvement, the amount of technology points you get is so amazing that it is well, you know, it's, it's even when you're at Mark 14 and just trying to improve the quality, it's still just a very, very good upgrade just because it fills the bar so fast. You get lots of rolls against your, um, you know, your current crit chance, and it just saves you a ton of dilithium. Yes, you had to spend the dilithium to get the Phoenix Prize Pack, but you get all of that dilithium back in the form of this tech upgrade because of how much it saves. Because when you think about it, I mean, these... Um, yeah, it's, what is it giving? Four times the amount, right? It's giving you four times the amount of a regular, um, you know, regular superior upgrade. And the regular superior upgrades take 1,000 dilithium. So, like I said, you're actually it'll actually save you even you'll actually spend even slightly less dilithium than you would. Not a whole lot, but be about 4,000, and that's about how much you have to spend per Phoenix Prize Pack. So that's pretty awesome. That's why everyone I remember when they announced the tech upgrade weekend this weekend, um, everyone on Reddit was like, "Oh my God, we need a uh, you know we need a uh, Phoenix Prize Pack event, please." and I guess Cryptic uh, decided to be merciful and gave us the Phoenix Prize Pack this weekend. Um, so yeah, it's definitely time to get on and spend all of your dilithium. Stock up on those Phoenix Prize Packs and uh, get those tech upgrades. So that's kind of the deal. What you what you basically do is, you know, once you have all the items you want, you know, say you've gotten your Red Matter Capacitor, your Crystalline Energy Torpedo, you got all the DOFs. Once you have everything you want, what you're going to do then is just down convert everything to an uncommon and then take all of your uncommons and get these uh, Phoenix Universal Tech upgrades and boom, you're all set. And, um, and when you use them on the Tech Upgrade Weekend, I mean, it's insane. I mean, here, let me buy a few more here. Okay. So I'm going to buy a few more here. Let's just go ahead and upgrade this. This is like insane how much this would save you over normally doing it. So do the Phoenix Prize Pack, we'll apply the upgrade. There we go. It's already Mark 13. You can see two of it is almost enough to get an Ultra Rare from Mark 12 to almost to Mark 14. If it if it crits, it would be. Haha, -ha, it critted. <laughs> I'm psychic. Uh, so it just went to Mark 14 with two tech upgrades. Two. I mean, new players, think about that. If every If everyone out there I know the sometimes the upgrade system is a little bit opaque and hard to approach when you're a new player, but now is the time to take advantage of this. You can get all of your Mark 12 stuff to Mark 14, which is a massive, massive upgrade. Even if you don't improve the quality, you just getting them up to Mark 14 is a huge upgrade, and you can do that with just, I mean, it's two to three of these uh, Universal Tech upgrades. That is insanely cheap. Two to three, that's like, I mean, I mean, you're only spending like 12,000 dilithium. That's nothing to get it from Mark 12 to Mark 14. That's nothing. And you're not spending any EC. It's, it, just do it. <laughs> it's amazing. That's why everyone loves these two events. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the upgrade here. So it's already, it's already Mark 14. Now we get to try to improve the quality. And um, I'm not sure how I'd approach this. I'd almost say I should take advantage of the, because I did craft a bunch of these um, experimental upgrades. Probably what I'd like to do is use a bunch of these at first to get the crit chance up. All right, so I'm already up to 4% crit chance. Um, and then start using the universal upgrades. So you can see it takes uh, two, slightly more than two. Oh, wow, that was lucky. Okay, so there you go. Um, that was insanely cheap. <laughs> you don't know. I mean, in the old days, you could spend going from like, you know, Mark 12 to Mark 14 Epic you could spend, oh, I mean, just hundreds of thousands of dilithium on just one item, just going, you know, on regular, uh, you know, regular upgrades. 
just going here, click, 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 going through hundreds and hundreds of these regular uh, superior upgrades. And just, you can see your dill just going down the toilet. But um, this is just so much better to save, so much dilithium, save so much time, and uh, it's just perfect. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually, although I did get pretty lucky on this one. But um, yeah, so that worked out really, really well. And now I have a uh, Mark 14 Epic uh, Omni Beam for uh, Polaron. So I'm going to be getting these uh, dual proton or dual uh, beam banks up to uh, Mark 14 Epics as well. And uh, yeah, so that's what Tech Upgrade Weekend is all about, guys. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, a few tips there for the Phoenix Prize Pack and why it is so great with the Tech Upgrade Weekend. Um, it might be confusing for new players. Hopefully uh, you will take advantage of this though. I mean, don't be afraid to go in here and spend all of your dilithium. As you can see, I spent about you know, almost 4 million dilithium on Phoenix prize packs. Um, I have a lot of upgrading still to do, and I am hoping to get a couple more of those ultra, uh, the ultra rare ones. I would like to get that uh, bulwark and maybe a bug ship on another character. Oh, ooh, that's one thing I should mention to you. Um, that these ships, when you get them from the Phoenix Prize Pack, this is a major downside, is that they are not for your entire account. Usually if you if you had gotten these ships during the event that they were came from, uh, they would have been, you know, uh, unlocked for your entire account. But when you do it through the Phoenix Prize Pack, it is only for that one character. So keep that in mind. Oh, make sure to open it on the one character. These tokens are, in fact... Uh, account bound so you can exchange them so you can you know you can come over here to your um, account bank and you can throw these in there no problem so don't worry about that I don't think the prize packs are though yeah the prize packs aren't but the tokens are which is kind of weird I don't know why that's the case um, but yeah so that is uh, one thing I just wanted to know before I signed out here because yeah you got to keep you got to keep that in mind that it's only for that one character um, it does unlock the Admiralty card and all that good stuff, but it, it is only for the one character. So, yep. Make sure you keep that in mind. Make sure to open it on the right character, because if you like got an epic one and open it on the right character, you'd be really pissed off. Um, but, yeah, that is it. That is the Phoenix Prize Pack this time around. Uh, take advantage of it while well, this tech upgrade weekend is going on, guys. Uh, it's awesome. It works great. You upgrade everything you possibly can. Even new players, don't be afraid to spend all of your dilithium on this. If you're needing, um, you know, even if you'd only have a like a couple hundred thousand, um, buy just as much as you can because there's no more efficient way to spend dilithium on upgrades than this event, these two events combined, the Phoenix Pies Pack and the Tech Upgrade Weekend. There's no better way. There's no other way that's more efficient. So use all the dilithium you can. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Bye for now.